It's not supposed to be in the set. And if it's not in the set, it's supposed to be in the set. Let's see. The things in the set are all the things with zeros down here. Right? So is this 52 character going to be here or not? I want you guys to think about this, because I've said it you know, a dozen times in and out, and I want somehow to figure a different way to say it that can help. All these strings are the ones whose diagonal values were zeros. Right? And this is a set of all of those. So what's the paradox about that? The paradox is that if this collection was actually somewhere in this row, if there was a finite state machine to do this collection, then there's going to be ones exactly underneath all these guys. There's going to be a one underneath the one. There's going to be a one underneath the one zero. What's there going to be underneath the 52 here? If there was a 1 there, then there was supposed to be a 0, right? There's only 1's underneath the spots that were zeros. Only 1's underneath the spots that you didn't accept yourself. So if there was a 1 in this spot, it's supposed to be a 0. But if there was a 0 in this spot, you were supposed to include it in this list, in which case you're supposed to put a 1 there. There's nothing you can put in this spot that makes sense. If you put a 1 in, it's supposed to be 0. If you put a 0, it's supposed to be 1. And it's the same thing as the barber who shaves everybody in town who doesn't shave himself. All right, Sharon, you're looking kind of quizzical. Oh, I just had a little flash. Is it making any sense? Yeah. All right, well, this, this idea is worth understanding at this level because the next level is very, very similar but with a teeny little twist. And you really need to get it down here, I think, before you can see it at the next level. It's not too much harder at the next level. It's a teeny bit. So questions about this right now. Here's what we've done. We've proved that there's a set, namely the set of the finite state machines that don't accept themselves. That set has no finite state machine. That set does not exist in this list. You can't find it. It's a pretty wild way of coming up with a language that doesn't have a finite state machine, but there it is. All right. Let me stop. Questions last time. So does this mean that <coughs> there are more languages than FSMs? Oh, yeah. Right. The FSMs are countable. You can list them. Teresa listed them, and then we ordered them. And the languages are the same as the real numbers. They're essentially, in every language is an infinite string of zeros and ones. So you can make a one-to-one -one correspondence, more or less, between languages and real numbers. So yes, languages are uncountable, and programs and finite state machines are countable. Therefore, there's got to be at least one that there's no machine for. And this is the particular one that there is no machine for. Right. Yes, absolutely, what you said is right. All right, let's do the next step. Let's take this barber and, like Donna said, throw him out of town. Bye-bye. What does that correspond to in this analogy? The paradox here was that we assumed there was a finite state machine that accepted all the other finite state machines that don't accept themselves. And we got a paradox. That was troublesome. There is no such finite state machine. We get a, a contradiction. But maybe there's somebody smarter outside of town that can do it. Maybe there's a Turing machine that can do it. Not even maybe. Go home and write one. Go home and write a program that will accept exactly the finite state machines that don't accept themselves. You should be able to do that. Go home and write a program. I'll give you the finite state machine. I'll give you the input, namely itself. You run the machine on itself, and you tell me, does it accept itself or not? Yes or no? It's completely doable. You could do it tonight. It would take you not too long. It would take you about an hour. Even if you forgot how to use Scheme, it would take you an hour. You could write a Turing machine to solve this problem. That doesn't cause any contradiction. The reason it doesn't is the same reason as when you move the barber out of town, there's no contradiction. Because you don't expect the barber to either shave himself or not shave himself. He's not in the criterion anymore. There can be a Turing machine that decides all these questions, and the question of what happens in the di diagonal is not a contradiction, because we don't care whether that Turing machine accepts itself or not. 
That Turing machine is not under consideration here. We're just saying that Turing machine is smart enough to know the answer for all the finite state machines. He might not know the answer for himself. He's not a finite state machine. He doesn't get included in the criteria. Right? So if he's included there, fine. If he's not, fine. Either way, it's OK. So if you move that guy out of town, there's no problem. And in fact, you can do it. And there is a way to decide all these things. There's no finite state machine that decides it, but there's certainly a Turing machine or a program that decides it. So this is not hard to decide, just that a finite state machine is too stupid to do it. It's too self-referential. All right, questions about that? Well, there are things that Turing machines can't do. And what's going to cause us trouble is we sent the Turing machine out of town. The barber went out of town, became a Turing machine. So now what we're going to do is open up the gates here, you know? Everybody can live wherever they want. And now let's talk about the Turing machine that shaves everybody in town that doesn't shave himself. And that Turing machine is not going to be around. That Turing machine is going to go poof into oblivion. But here there's a real strange subtlety. And the subtlety will come up in making this diagram. And there's a little bit of a subtlety, and that's why I want to make sure you get this diagram without the subtlety. The thing about this diagram is that we can really fill it out. Give me a finite state machine. Give me an input. I can tell you 1, 0, 1, 0. I can just execute it and tell you what happens. And I could do it for every single one. And I get this funny contradiction. If we try to do the same trick for Turing machines, something happens along the way, and we have to kind of zigzag and do a tricky um, logic trick. But when we're all done, the same result will occur. The Turing machine that accepts all other Turing machines that don't accept themselves, that doesn't exist at all. And it's going to imply that the halting problem is undecidable. So that's where we're heading. We're going to start that in just 30 seconds. The questions about this? Yeah? Can you have a meaningful machine which um, has a totally random response to whether it accepts itself or not? Um, uh, it's a really good question. I'm hesitating not because. <coughs> It, it's a good question. It's not even a digression. It's a, a, a Turing machine, as it's defined, is like a program in the sense that there is no randomness to what it does. If you give it an input, you can watch what it does. And there's no question that at some point it will either infinite loop or it will accept or it will reject on a given input. However, there are versions of Turing machines that people talk about in order to simulate random computation where the Turing machine is allowed to like spin a die or pick a random number in the middle of its computation to try to model the idea of randomness. And we're not talking about those Turing machines at all here. And that is a long digression and a very interesting topic. But here we're assuming that every Turing machine is deterministic in the sense that you know what it's going to do at every step. Other questions? Okay, let's, let's move on to the next step then. We move from barbers to finite state machines, and now we're moving up to Turing machines. OK, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this list of strings again. Zero. You know what? So I don't mess up this list. How about if I just number the strings? Any? No more binary. I mess it up on binary. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> it's like the Mighty Python movie. You shall count to three, you shall not count to four, you shall count to three, you shall count to two only on the way to three, and one, two, four. Three, sir. All right, these are Turing machines. These are inputs. Same trick as before. Turing machines, as you know, you know, are funny, these pictures with these arrows. There's a way to encode them in binary, just like there's a way to encode finite state machines in binary. Pick any way you like. And whichever way you like, give me the one that's the smallest, and I will call that Turing machine 0. Give me the one that's the next smallest, and binary, I'll call that Turing machine 1. So these are the ordered Turing machines according to whatever encoding you like, from smallest to largest. And these are the identical strings as inputs. And these Turing machines, you could run them on every single input to see whether they accept the inputs, reject them, or, uh, or run forever, I guess. That's the thing about Turing machines. 
They don't just say yes or no. 